I'm Dave Daly for LincolnCityTV.com, and I'm so excited to bring to you all an interview with the uh, D Lake mayor of 1964. But um, this is everybody, Henry. He goes by Buzz Florep. And uh, thanks for talking with me tonight, uh, Buzz. Very grateful that your son, Brian, a TAF graduate, was able to connect me uh, with you. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about the history of the 20 Miracle Miles, D Lake, Ocean Lake, Taft, uh, this whole community. So, uh, Buzz, for audiences, tell us how you got to Lincoln City in the first place. That came through my association in the radio business. Uh, I had been in the business for perhaps five years uh, and uh, became a manager at the time I moved to Lincoln City. That was my uh, first uh, job and first job as manager. But uh, the opportunity came uh, to move to Lincoln City and so that's really where it all began. One of the things that I still recall, one of the old timers says, uh, well, you know, you may not like it at first, but it'll grow on you. <laughs> and apparently it did. Well, you made a significant uh, contribution in so many facets. So from our community, I just want to tell you, thank you. I grew up in Lincoln City from uh, 70 to 79. I was a little guy. Uh, and to see what you now went through when that was six different neighborhoods uh, with a lot of acrimony discussions, uh, trying to solve the solutions on how to deal with water, fire, police, uh, looking at the news clippings, uh, two, two little neighborhoods were trying to combine, or Taft was trying to jail in with Nell Scott. There was a lot of efforts uh, trying to pull that off. What, what was it like during that time with all these discussions with all the different mayors and infrastructure discussions? Well, the problems, of course, uh, go along with any community. And when you looked at that area, seven something miles long, about the length of San Francisco, but in that area there were two fire districts, uh, 13 separate taxing districts, three incorporated communities, and uh, the four unincorporated ones. Uh, it became a challenge. It says there's got to be a better way to do this, and the um, efforts of the 20 Miracle Mile Ad Club, which was in essence the Chamber of Commerce at that time. We didn't call it that, but we performed that function of marketing and trying to bring the community together. So with that effort, uh, it did bring about the effort to why not make one city? And then you deal with the little human problems of what are you going to call it and can you use any of the uh, individual existing city or community names? No, because they're all politically charged. Yeah. So that's how the name Lincoln City ar arrived. Nobody had that, and yet we were in Lincoln County, so that seemed to be the one that filled the need. There were other suggestions. Uh, everybody felt, well, gee, it should have beach in there. Yeah. Uh, which it didn't. We you know, had to settle for Lincoln County, and most people knew that Lincoln County had a beach. I guess. Yeah, and you know, a little bit of background, even giving some history to our Lincoln City Chamber of Commerce. So uh, it used to be the 20 Miracle Miles, and from the 1950s and 60s, it was called uh, a promotional campaign called the Oregon Coast um, Ad Club. And this went from uh, Depot Bay all the way to Lincoln City. That 20 miles of all those businesses pooled their money and bought advertisements up in Portland to get people to come down to the coast, correct? Our slogan was Otis to Depot Bay. That was the 20 miracle miles of Highway 101. And a little bit of it. A little bit of background. So Sandy Boulevard had a Miracle Mile promotional campaign up in Portland in the 50s and 60s. And that is what uh, was born. Uh, you working for the radio station. Give us the name of that radio station as well. It was KBCH and still in existence, yeah. to my knowledge, uh, different ownership and yeah. so forth. But uh, yes, that was our promotional vehicles. We had the ear of the community, if you will. Yeah. Uh, small town radio in those years. Uh, everybody knew everybody else, so it was an effective means of communication. And I, I think uh, we should give a good deal of credit to uh, Al and Lorraine Reed, who were the owners of the uh, 
De Lake News Guard, uh, and that was the North Lincoln News Guard was the name of the paper, and they gave a lot of support to this whole effort too, and documented it. So, those who didn't get to hear what happened on the radio got to read the results uh, in the paper that came out next week. It was a weekly, but they had good summaries. Yeah, and and so uh, in. Uh, there was a time in the early 60s, I believe, that the name had changed from the Oregon Coast uh, Ad Club to uh, Miracle Mile, 20 Miracle Mile Ad Club, Correct. following this uh, success of the Miracle Mile marketing for Sandy Boulevard in Portland. And then I want to kind of paint the picture of 1964 on how these six communities came into being one city of Lincoln City. So in a chronological order, the discussions were to pick a name because you couldn't pull the people on a name. And the news guard ran an article and did a vote by newspaper um, and ran three or four names. And this is uh, March of, of uh, 1964. And again, this is the year that uh, Buzz was uh, elected as mayor of D Lake, one of these communities uh, that you were in discussions with the other civic leaders here in Lincoln City before it was Lincoln City on, hey, let's get a name together so that we can go put it before a vote on a ballot measure. So that, what was it like selecting that name and how did you feel when you finally heard what the most popular name was? Well, we were pleased, of course, when we had suggested the variety of names that went um, but we felt, again, that uh, being in Lincoln County and no other community named Lincoln City, that would be the logical one. And fortunately, uh, after it was put in committee and given to the public, they agreed that, okay, that was neutral. That was the primary concern in picking a name. It had to be neutral, one that wasn't infringing. For example, Lincoln Beach was suggested as a name for the city, but there already was the Lincoln Beach community, so yeah. we couldn't usurp their name. Yeah, and so we're going to paint this picture of 1964. Here's your newly elected mayor of, of uh, the city of D Lake, and uh, so in March they come to a consensus on a name only by a newspaper vote, and then come April, and our governor, Hatfield, at the time in a lecture or in a, in a press conference in Salem, happens to call the 20 Miracle Miles and tell us about that story. Well, it was a comment that a newspaper reporter had used calling us the 20 Miserable Miles. Hatfield, as governor, repeated that in a news conference. So, of course, the news media jumped on it, and so what do we do about that? And uh, as the uh, ad club, then 20 Miracle Miles ad club, we figured, well, what do we do, throw rocks at each other, or do we try to make the proverbial lemonade with uh, the lemons? So we challenged uh, Governor Hatfield then that, yes, uh, 20 Miracle Miles could use some cleanup in our beach community, but we said the uh, entrances to the city of Salem also needed some cleanup. So we challenged the city of Salem to clean up their entrances. We would clean up the beach. And then he, Governor Hatfield, was to judge who did the best job. If the 20 Miracle Miles did a better job of clean up and fix up, then he, the governor, would come down and clean up a mile of beach with a stick with a pin in it. And he did. I want to kind of tell you all the logistics that Buzz was able to do, that the community of Lincoln City came together. The governor made these remarks in April of 1964, and he came and did the inspection in July. This community had 20 miles to clean up, beautify, paint, get beautiful. Uh, Salem had a lot less real estate to have to clean up. Yeah. And it's amazing what Buzz and that town, that camaraderie that said, we will win, we will beautify this beautiful coast. And so tell us about when you heard that Hatfield was coming, what was that experience like? Well, we felt that this was the opportunity that we needed, and needless to say, it did work because after he had declared that we had won, uh, this was picked up by the Oregonian. We received top of the front page uh, coverage on that, 
And that, we felt, was uh, enough of a victory that says, okay, uh, our lemonade proved to be uh, quite palatable to us. Yes. <clears throat> and so it turned out uh, that, yes, Lincoln City did win. I'm going to put some photos here of Governor Hatfield uh, with a stick, with a nail, on the beaches here in Lincoln County cleaning those beaches uh, as, a, as he had to deliver on his promise that he would clean up a, a mile of beach. Um, and so in 1965, the vote went out to the people. And what was your feeling now hearing? Uh, it needs to be acknowledged that in this effort to bring about the formation of a city with these communities, that the uh, attitudes weren't all unanimous because the mayor of Taft, a fellow by the name of Manville Robinson, he didn't like that idea and felt that the community should retain their individual names. And so when it came to the election, each of the unincorporated and the three incorporated cities, Ocean Lake, De Lake, and Taft, all had to pass it by a majority. But that majority in the city of Taft was three votes. And uh, the mayor of Taft, Manville Robinson, I think his quote was, okay, you beat us. <laughs> and uh, that was the big challenge right there was, okay, we now have the go-ahead. And from there, we had to find people to run the new city. Obviously, each of us who had been mayors, uh, Manville uh, Robinson, the mayor of Taft, had not supported it. So he decided that he wanted no part of Lincoln City. Uh, so Jerry Parks, who was mayor of Ocean Lake, and I as mayor of Dee Lake, we said, okay, we will not be on the new city government, but we will be in an advisory capacity on the planning commission. So yeah. Jerry Parks and I became members of the planning commission, a uh, position which I maintained until I left Lincoln City. Wow. And to kind of say where it went from there, uh, um, Buzz stayed on as on the planning commission in Lincoln City uh, through the 70s, early 70s, to when you actually relocated uh, t to Southern Oregon or to Newport. But um, that just shows your dedication to our town. It showed your follow throughness, your ability to know all the issues that those towns are dealing with and shepherd them and keep the momentum going. What was it like being on the planning commission and helping that new uh, mayor who, who had never been a mayor deal with all these new issues? What was that like being on that planning commission? Well, I think that worked surprisingly well uh, because we all had the same goals and Ross Evans, who was the first mayor, uh, he was in accord with the goals that we had, uh, had outlined in trying to set up a new city. So uh, there wasn't any acrimony at that time with the new uh, city councilman and mayor. And uh, I think that it was a very successful effort from that point forward. And I, I would you know, say that the visits I make to Lincoln City today, we couldn't have imagined back then what would happen uh, to this uh, area that we were struggling so hard to bring to a tourism destination. Uh, it exceeded far beyond what we had ever hoped for. Well, it is what it is today because of you and those founding leaders who didn't have a map to go by. There wasn't a manual of like how to bring six communities under one roof. And share a little bit. How did you pick a city manager? How did you pick who would be uh, the recorder and, and the, the librarian? How did you merge all these different offices into one? Well, the offices from the individual cities uh, were the drawing point. Uh, the city attorney, for example, was the city attorney of Taft in the past, and I think he had served for more than one city, so the, uh, the resource was there, and it was just a matter of you know, getting the, the people involved to say, okay, let's build Lincoln City, and uh, it really wasn't that much of a problem. Uh, we did have some uh, discussions dissension, if you will, when we started building things like the Inn at Spanish Head. That uh, brought some objections of people who said, 
you're going to deface the beach, putting that much of a large building, you know, 10 stories right on the beach, up the cliff. But uh, obviously, I think that uh, has proved to be, have been a proper decision. But we did get criticized at the time. They're saying, you're ruining the beaches. Wow. 